where are the people who are most vulnerable to climate change? You know, the, the billion or more that are most vulnerable. Where are they living and in what kind of circumstances? I, I think that I need to give you a two, I, I need to be very careful with, with my answer. Uh, under current circumstances, under current trends of climate change, we could say that the most vulnerable are the elderly, the children, the poor, poor countries. There are some regions and sectors which are more vulnerable. For instance, coastal areas are more vulnerable to what? To sea level rise, to hurricanes, which we are not yet clear about that, but it may be that because the oceans are increasing their temperatures, it can be that they are more intense. Kevin, are you clear that, uh, that they're in intensifying? You know, uh, not it's the not number? clear, right? It's not clear, but you, you can tell, it, Kevin. I mean, I don't know how, whether you want to go into this right now in, in, in great detail, but uh, um, there is more, you know, the sea temperatures are warming. And higher sea temperatures provide more energy for storms, and, and including hurricanes. There's more water vapor in the atmosphere. It rains harder. And the evidence in the Atlantic, where we've got the best observations, suggests that it certainly has been more active since 1994. The variability is large, interannual, from El Nino and other things, and, and, and decadal time scales. And so the, the effects of humans is relatively modest at the moment, but the best so, you know, the best evidence we have at the moment suggests that hurricanes will get more intense and bigger, but maybe there will be fewer of them in the future. Right. Uh, Let me yeah. finish this. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So that said, we we shouldn't think, ah, okay, the wealthy us, we, 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 we won't have any problem. What has been also found is that if we continue with business as usual, then no one will escape the impacts of climate change, and we have already some examples of that which come from developed countries. We have Katrina, we also have the heat waves in Europe, right. the 2005 heat waves in Europe, which showed us that if, as it is predicted, we get more intense extremes, more intense droughts, more intense floods, then it can be that no one will escape those impacts. Mm -hmm. So if, if we don't stop this, then there will be, there, there will be ha it will be harder and harder for us to cope and to adapt to climate change. Let me provoke you a little on this because um, one of the things that's happened, especially in the last uh, 25 years or so, is increased drought throughout Africa, especially southern Africa, um, Northern Africa, uh, you know, throughout most of Africa, and the Sahel in particular. <coughs> and we know that that is a part of the signal of, of climate change, and it seems to be a part of uh, the human component of, of climate change. And so you, from the standpoint of Africa, you can argue that uh, the uh, bleaker conditions that Africans are experiencing is in part caused by the affluent countries who have put carbon dioxide into the a into the atmosphere. Right. Um, do you have any right. thoughts on, yeah. on that? Uh, oh, yes. water, water resources, I think, are a major issue. Right. Are a major right. issue. And I, I, I agree with what you said. Uh, and I just would like to say another thing. <clears throat> when we discuss how vulnerable we are to climate change, to climate variability and change. We need to keep two factors in, in mind. One is exposure. We will be exposed to more climate-related events, but the other is sensitivity. And sensitivity or vulnerability, we call it, the capacity to be damaged by those uh, events is determined by societal factors. A society which has uh, warning systems, a society which has social networks, which has the support of families to deal with those uh, events, a society which has, which is cohesive, which is able to help, whose people are able to help each other, has more possibilities to cope, to deal, to adapt to those changes than societies or communities which are, have 
do, which lack all those elements. So we really need to be, be careful with that because sometimes people could say, okay, why is it that some communities are more able to deal with these heat waves? Right, they are more able because they have things. They have access to air conditioning. They have their families, for instance, for the elderly, to have someone to support them is important. So we need to pay attention to how much we can be exposed to those events, but also to what kind of uh, elements of infrastructures of networks we have developed to cope with those.